Hello my kings, queens, and fellow non-binary leaders, and welcome back to the Yagama. It's been a while since we got started with the Percy Jackson content, however many of you have been requesting that I continue, and so here we go. A little disclaimer beforehand, I don't condone any of JK Rowling's current views, especially on the whole trans issue. I am trans myself, and it is very hurtful that something that brought me so much nostalgia is now dragged through the mud like this. So yeah, that sucks. Um, I still somewhat like Harry Potter, but I would never buy or any merge of it anymore or un support it through monetary gains. So, yeah. Hazel nervously led the group through the crowded train station of King's Cross. Since she was the most affine with magic and illusions, she was chosen to lead the way in hopes she would know which wall was the right one. On the one hand, she didn't mind, and being underground calmed her. It was her domain. But on the other, the mass of people surrounding and distracting her made the intricate tunnel system feel cluttered. Add magic to that, and a headache was guaranteed. She had never been in Lady Lissa's maze, except for the small version Pasiphae had conjured up to kill them. She wasn't sure she would have liked being in the labyrinth, with its ever-changing walls and alleys. Underground or not, her ability to sense the twisting ways might have fried her brain. Now she searched for a similar sensation she felt back then. A hidden room or something that could only be accessed through a wall, but it was difficult. It didn't help that the luggage Hecate had given them was enough to fill huge suitcases. Navigating through the crowded station quickly became difficult even with Annabeth and Reyna organizing them into smaller groups so as not to draw too much attention. Hazel's group consisted of Frank, her, her brother and Will. They were the largest group, with Annabeth navigating Percy and Jason through the crowd and Piper Chum speaking her way through behind them with Reyna and Leo in tow. Frank next to her gave her an encouraging smile as she threw a nervous glance in his direction to make sure he was still here. We'll find it, don't worry. She nodded and tried not to think about how Nico made himself as small as possible behind them too much. At this point, she wanted nothing more than to get out of here. Suddenly, something odd happened. The image before her of the train seemed to flicker. Just a little bit offset to the side, she could sense another station with a bright red train. It was parked there as though it was the most natural thing in the world. The overlay gave her a headache, but the moment she sensed the crowd of people with similarly heavy suitcases waiting by the other station, she knew they were on the right path. This way. All she had to do now was find the entrance. She sighed in relief as she found a wall, more of a white pillar really, in between the stations that flickered and at times almost appeared transparent. Found it. It's that wall. She was about to walk straight through it when Nico stopped her. We need to make it look natural. He gestured towards the muggles surrounding them, who eyed them suspiciously with their heavy suitcases. I'll manipulate the mist. You and Will go first. Frank and I will follow. They nodded, and Hazel was quick to bring forth more of the magical force, hiding their existence from the mortals. She showed them what they expected to see, some rowdy but otherwise unsuspicious teenagers. Over time, she found that humans find it easier to accept and believe something slightly negative that confirmed how they saw the world. They grew suspicious of things that seemed too peaceful or were too good to be true, unless it was their desires being met. A little hesitantly, Nico led Will through the wall and Frank followed. She signaled to Annabeth that this was the entrance and that she had shrouded it in the mist before following suit. It was an odd sensation walking through the wall. Even though she knew it was an illusion of sorts, she expected some sort of resistance naturally, but none came. 
As soon as she came out on the other side, she was rushed to move on, to make space for more. She almost expected Annabeth to be next, but instead a small family stepped out with a little kid, about 11 years old. They excitedly looked around and held the cat in their arms. The station seemed even more crowded here and Hazel struggled to push through to reunite with the others. Everywhere she looked she saw owls, cats and colorful robes filled the room and the steam of the engine lay in the air. Children of the ages 11 to 17 gathered around the red train and bid goodbye to their parents. A large group of redheads drew her attention not too far from them. What now? I don't know, but I need to get out of here. The only reason I didn't shadow travel yet is him. Nico looked slightly green in the face and visibly uncomfortable. Will teased him, but pulled him closer nonetheless in an attempt to shield him from the crowd. Let's get on the train then. Shouldn't we wait for the others? We all have to get to the same train, and I doubt we find them in this crowd. Will nodded in agreement and scanned the area briefly. We should at least get our luggage inside already and find a place to sit. We can go back and search for them then. They managed to get the big suitcases in with effort. Inside, the train was separated into smaller compartments and Hazel chose one that had space for six people. As soon as everything was secured, she let herself fall into one of the seats with a sigh. Nico curled up opposite her next to the window, where Will took the seat beside him. Frank lingered a little uncertain, and Hazel understood why, but she was too tired to go out there again. I'll check if the others made it through. Turn to an owl. That'll make it easier. She wasn't sure if he was serious, but Frank seemed to seriously consider it. And after checking that no one saw him, he did just that. At once, he flew off. They sat in silence for a moment and Hazel saw how Nico's grip on Wilson tightened. Are you okay? He shrugged his shoulders. This is a nightmare. I'm sure it's just the stress of departure. As soon as we are there, things will calm down. Nico didn't look like he believed him, but he didn't say anything either and allowed Will to pull him to lean against his side and draw soothing patterns over his arm. When the door opened again, Hazel expected Frank to be back and was surprised to find a platinum blonde girl standing in the doorframe. Hello. Hazel blinked, a little confused. The girl had a soft voice and a dreamy look in her eyes, like she wasn't quite present. She smiled softly. Um, hello. Her smile brightened. Can I join you? Uh, sure. Uh, forgive us, we had a long journey and are quite tired. She wasn't sure the girl had listened as she sat down next to Will and pulled out a magazine, which oddly enough, she turned upside down. Oh, that's quite alright. People usually just ignore me. She lowered her magazine again and looked at her over the edge of the paper. I'm Luna, by the way. Luna Lovegood. Hazel wasn't sure what to make of that, or to think of her, but she seemed nice. Odd, but nice. She reciprocated her smile, making hers brighten ever so slightly. My name is Hazel Lovesk. The one falling asleep over there is my brother Nico, and that's his boyfriend Will. Nice to meet you. Will greeted her with his typical bright smile. She seemed almost a little startled by that, before she reciprocated the gesture. The conversation was interrupted by a clicking on the window. When Hazel turned, she saw an owl, 
or rather, Frank as an owl if she recognized him correctly. She froze. Of course, with Luna here, he couldn't transform back. Does one of you expect mail? Um, no. Perhaps it confused the apartment. The owl vanished again, making Hazel even more nervous. She didn't like how they had been separated. Luna just hummed and played with the necklace. An odd piece of jewelry made from what looked like caps of a bottle. That's such an interesting necklace. It suits you. She tried to overplay her nervousness by talking, and Luna smiled again. Oh yes, but it's also remarkably useful. You see, it keeps away Rexperts. Hazel frowned slightly, now seriously interested. What are those? They're invisible. Really tiny too. They fly around your head and make you feel loopy and fuzzy. Most think they are just myths though. That confused her only further, but it wouldn't have been the craziest thing she encountered. But you don't? No. I think they are quite noticeable if you look closely enough. It is not too bad though if you don't. Thinking positive thoughts helps to get rid of them. She sounded so genuinely fascinated and compassionate while talking. It warmed Hazel's heart. She decided she liked Luna. Before she could deepen the conversation, Frank opened the door again and she felt relief washing over her upon being reunited. Luna, this is my boyfriend Frank. Frank, this is Luna. Oh, um, nice to meet you. She smiled and nodded as he sat down next to Hazel. Percy, Annabeth and Jason are in a compartment a bit further ahead, and Raina, Leo and Piper just got onto the train as I spotted them. In other words, we all made it. Yay! Nico nudged him annoyed, causing Will to chuckle. You are not from here, are you? I have never seen you at Hogwarts before. She didn't look up from her magazine while asking, neither was her tone laced with suspicion or malice. It was simply a matter of fact. Oh yeah, no, we are actually from America. You could say we are exchange students of sorts. Oh, I've never heard of something like that. How interesting. Will you attend classes as well? Hazel wasn't sure. She hoped for the love of the gods not. None of them could perform the magic that would be asked of them. Actually, we are here to attend some sort of tournament. She tried sounding confident and giving just enough information that it sounded plausible, hoping that Luna would fill in the gaps. She looked deep in thought as she considered her response. I heard rumors, but... Hmm. I assume it'll be announced at the banquet. She seemed utterly unbothered. Hazel hoped the other wizards and witches would be just as kind and equally as easy to convince. I hope they'll have pudding. I like pudding. She mumbled a few things quietly under her breath before turning to her magazine once more. Hazel exchanged a nervous glance with Frank before deciding with a sigh to rest for now. It wasn't like she could discuss anything important with Luna here. At some point, Hazel had almost drifted off with her little sleep she had gotten the night before. Nico was way ahead of her on that. The door opened once more. A huge amount of weight fell from her shoulders when she recognized Raina. Hazel, prayed out John. She gave them a nod and greeting, with a hint of a smile playing on her lips that immediately vanished as Luna to her left let out a curious sound at her greeting. She stiffened, visibly unaware of the girl until now. 
Radar, is that something American? The taller girl's eyes narrowed and she scanned Luna suspiciously. Hazel tensed. She searched for a way to silently communicate to Rainer that the blonde wasn't a threat. Yes, you could say that. She looked like she expected more questions to follow, but with a little shift in her expression and a conciliatory smile, Luna turned back to a book she had exchanged for the magazine some time ago, only commenting, How nice. It sounds lovely. Hazel had never heard the position of Prada being described as lovely, and Reyna too seemed taken aback briefly before relaxing slightly. It was obvious that she respected Luna's heightened sense of empathy, recognizing her reaction as what it was. Thank you. I assume in a way it is. Is everything alright with the others? She only slowly turned her attention to Frank. Her gaze lingered on the young witch in interest. Yes, I came to check that everyone made it onto the train and a witch by the name Katie Bell informed me that it was getting time to change into our uniforms and prepare. So far, everyone seemed surprised yet welcoming to our presence. I, however, could not acquire further information on what the procedure would be upon arrival. That depends. Surprised, they turned to Luna once more. She hadn't taken her attention off the book and for a moment didn't resume talking. She didn't even seem to have noticed that she had gathered all the attention in the room at once. On what, Luna? Hmm? Oh, there are two ways to the castle. First years will be led over the lake by Hagrid. He's quite nice and really tall. Hard to miss in a crowd, really. And everyone else rides with the carriages. They are pulled by Thestrals, but no one ever seems to notice them. She glanced at them briefly, her voice drifting off, and Hazel wondered whether these Thestrals were the same as the Rexperts. Perhaps it's best if we'll just wait and see. I'm sure we'll be informed given time. Raina nodded briskly, not quite satisfied with not having a concrete plan ahead to focus on. Let's get prepared, get changed and make sure our luggage... Oh, you don't take your luggage up to the castle, someone else does. You just leave it on the train and it'll appear next to your bed. Are you sure that applies to us as well? Luna nodded and Reyna searched her face for any sign of mischief once more. Hazel could see her hands twitching to summon her dogs that could detect lies. Alright then. Thank you for everything, Luna. She gave them a last look that, without another word spoken, said all they had to know. Leave the suitcases but wear your weapons, ambrosia and nectar on you. And they complied. Thank you so, so much for watching to the end. I really hope you enjoy this. It is definitely different from my usual content, but if you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and leave a comment um, with some feedback. This is the first Percy Jackson fanfic along with Lithy that I have ever written and this is my first ever Harry Potter fanfic. So I'm still working on like figuring out the characters, their voices, everything so yeah any feedback would be appreciated and tell me your favorite quote under the pinned comment a special thanks as always goes out to my nerdy necos they are amazing and they help this channel out so so much huge uh, thanks to blush brooke palomi who just joined i really hope you enjoy your early access and the other channel member members perks they got this video a week in advance and um, so yeah if that sounds interesting to you um check out the drive button of this video here on other social media i'm especially active on tiktok and Occasionally on Instagram, and here's some more content. Check that out as well if you like. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye, everyone. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.